Welcome back, everybody. My name is Dave Hayes, and this is Life Post Stroke. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is a 1963 Epiphone Texan. Uh, it is an all-solid uh, wood guitar, meaning it has a Sitka spruce top with um, mahogany, solid mahogany back and sides. It's got a mahogany neck on it. Um, it's, it's just a nice guitar. It's a nice old guitar, and it has that vintage Epiphone slash Gibson sound. Because remember, in 1963, the Epiphones, the good ones, well actually all of them, they didn't make real cheap ones back then. But both Epiphone and Gibson were made in the same plant. So the Gibson and the Epiphones were all made in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So, uh, and, and when they made them in Michigan, they were making them out of the exact same woods. They were being made by the same Luther, Luthiers, which is a guitar maker. And um, pretty much everything was exactly the same, except for, of course, very small, minor uh, things. Like on my guitar, I have, uh, well, we'll get into that when we get into the video. But anyways, trust me, um, the old Epiphones are basically a Gibson, okay? So, uh, when we come back, I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride with me when we go to re-glue the bridge down on this guitar because it started pulling off. So, as soon as we come back, we're going to go ahead and start this project. And as always, if you like my video, don't forget to hit that like button and share my videos. It really helps me out. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you saw, think about subscribing. And if you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell icon. That way you get a notification of my videos as soon as I release them. All right, well, um, just to give you guys a little heads up, first off, we already did start this. All I was going to do is strip the bridge of all what? We were going to take the, the nut out. We were going to take all the external bolts off. This has the old-fashioned adjustable bridge. We were going to take all that out so we could go ahead and get started and well i took the nuts off on the inside and the bridge was loose and i'm going to show you why that is uh basically they glued on top of the finish instead of cutting the finish away to bare wood and then gluing the bridge on they glued it right over top of the freaking finish and that's how most of the big guitar manufacturers did it back then so let's go ahead and get a closer look at this and i'll show you all what we're doing with this and where we're at right now Okay, so here we are, and <laughs> Smokey's trying to get into shot. Of course, the camera's not picking him up. Not have it anymore. Uh, go ahead, Noah. Let's explain where we're at in this. What all did we do to this so far? We cut around the bridge so we can only take the finish off from there. So basically, what we did was we scored around the bridge so that when we chip this finish off of here and get it back to bare wood again, uh, it doesn't chip away. You know into the into the finish and I know it's going to it is going to inevitably chip away some of this finish I, I, I know there's no getting around that but um, to eliminate most of it we, we scored around it now we were gonna take this and have it sent away right yeah and um, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to look at it and see if you know since I glued on the bridge to Noah's uh, Gibson Flamingo guitar. No, it's not a flamingo guitar. It's a. Uh, it's. It is a uh, classical guitar. Well, the nice thing about that one is the bridge was already. Off. Yeah, the bridge was already off on that one, so we had a head start. But since I glued the bridge on that and it turned out so great, it's such a great job. I thought I would just look at this and see how far I could go. Um, I wasn't thinking we were going to be able to do it, but like I said, there's. If you look at the bottom of the bridge, it's got two bolts that go through the top of the guitar and there's little nuts and washers that holds the bridge in place. That's the only thing that's keeping it on. Exactly. Those two bolts and a little I don't even think the glue was holding because once I loosened up the bolts to these, the nuts to these, the whole I could feel the whole bridge move. So it wasn't that's what was holding this bridge on. So like I said, I took the little nuts off, we put everything into a little plastic bag so we don't lose anything. Um, I also removed the adjustable nut that goes in here, and that nut is right there. That nut is made out of, uh, it's just rosewood. It's a rosewood nut. 
Um, I'd love to be able to fill that and have it recut and put a bone nut in there. But you know what? I'm just happy that we're going to get this fixed. And, uh, and just we're going to keep the sound original as it sounded in 1957. When even though the bridge was lifted on this and everything, the strings were only, I mean, the strings were very low. Yeah, it wasn't like the string, it wasn't like this guitar was hard to play or it was very, you know, uncomfortable. It was just a little, the strings were a little high. Yeah, the strings were a little high, especially when we play it against his brand new guitar, uh, that really good one he has. Yeah, his guitar is like an electric guitar. Basically, you just tap the strings and they're there. It's got no buzz. Well, we're going to try to do that with this as well. But what we got to concentrate on right now is scraping off this finish. And I'm not going to have you guys watch what we do, but I wanted to bring you guys along for the ride with us while we get this guitar prepared and re-glued and get my bridge re-glued back on there. And um, I figured we'd go ahead and record it. So uh, next time you see us, we'll have this scraped all the finish off of here and ready to glue the bridge back on. So basically what we did was we scored around the bridge. We had the bridge, we dropped it down into its um, pre-drilled holes where them little bolts were sticking down through the bottom of the bridge and I just took a very very sharp knife and scored around the bridge uh, so we could cut through the finish because here's the reason why the old bridge lifted to begin with was they glued that bridge on top of the finish that's there which is something you don't do <laughs> that's a big no 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 so what we're doing is scraping away the finish now and uh, this bridge will go right back in there now the finish will actually create a pocket for that bridge to sit in too um, but it's not going to shift because we do have those two bolts going down through which is awesome so that's gonna what what will do is when i glue this up i'll glue it up and i'll put them bolts back on it and tighten them up to pull that bridge down then i'll put my clamps on it so this should be a really nice glue up job that's exactly how you do it, no? Um, it took us a long time to find... I have probably 20, 30 chisels. And do you think I could find a single chisel? Yeah, we found one. One single chisel. Alright, we'll bring you back when we get a little further on down the road with this job. Okay, ready? Okay, we have everything sanded, chipped away. Uh, I sanded the back of the bridge. Noah sanded the guitar top. Um, it actually went very well. We have a couple very small necks in it, but you know what? They're battle scars. And uh, that just goes to show that when you have an old guitar, uh, things happen. Uh, and this is only the second time I've ever replaced a bridge. So uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to take our wood glue and we're using the same glue that we used on the, on his guitar, on his Gibson that we fixed, and we're going to use it on this. Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and glue up. You might hear some sewing in the background, but that's just my wife working on her quilt. Uh, I'm going to probably turn on some music and while you guys watch what we're doing anyway, so let's go ahead and glue it up. About working with uh, like an Elmer's or it it, yeah, it, it doesn't set. You have a lot of time to work with it. So um, Noah's being very, very cautious 
about how he, uh, you know, puts the glue on. Last time we were like rushing around. We were so scared it was going to dry on us. <laughs> this time we're taking our time. Uh, we are using a little brush to brush it around to make sure it's nice and even the whole way around. Um, and this time for us, less is better. So that looks good, Noah. Okay, let them see how you have that covered on both sides. Okay, here we are, day two, and um, it still it has to uh, set. Well, it's actually you could probably pull the, the the clamps off of it. I pulled the center clamp off of it, but we're leaving the end clamps on yet uh, until about six o'clock tonight. Then we're going to go ahead and pull the last two clamps off of it. But I wanted to show you where we're at on this right now. Um, while I have all the strings off and I have everything stripped off of here, I took a razor blade and I scraped the fretboard, okay? Um, and when I say scrape, you just hold it flat and you just scrape it back and forth. Basically taking off the old oil kind of gunk, uh, you know, the, the stuff from your fingers, stuff like that. Um, I'll never get out the big divots and I wouldn't want to. Uh, even Noah said, you know, no, uh-uh, they need to stay there because that uh, just, you know, enhances the guitar, lets us, reminds us of who used to play this guitar, um, and the history with it, you know, uh, which is a big family history thing. So we left that in, but the inlays really cleaned up nicely. Uh, and then what I did was I took paint pen, uh, you know, then once you shake up the paint inside, and I went around and dabbed a couple of spots on the top up here, up here on the peg head, uh, because I kind of wanted to fill some of the deep scratches and the nicks. It's got a, it's got some pretty big nicks up here, but again, it's not going to look new. It's not going to look, you know, <laughs> pristine, and I don't want it to look pristine. I want it to look like this. But as soon as this gets done drying tonight, we're going to let it go until tomorrow to give it, you know, even another night for it to dry. Uh, and then we will go ahead and put strings on. Now, one thing I will bring up. Now, one thing I did do is I took this cover off. And this is the uh, adjustment for the neck. I took that cover off. And I have no tools whatsoever that will fit the nut on the end of that. And what I wanted to do is I just wanted to check that to see if it was loose and if I could take a little bit of tension back because this is straight as an arrow. There is no, you know, anything like that. So it could actually have a little bit of back pressure on it. Um, but I don't, I have nothing that will fit that nut. So I'm kind of screwed with that. I can't do anything with that right now. But once we get this all done, I will go down and see if um, my music shop... Uh, if they have a tool to fit that, and I'll see if he can adjust that for me. Um, again, before you adjust that, take all the tension off the strings. You know, then 
and, and don't ever go more than a quarter of a turn at a time. String it back up, get attention, check everything, you know, and go from there. So, all right, I will bring you back whenever the glue on the fretboard is dried, and um, we'll go from there. I'm good. So, I just wanted to bring you along for the ride. Uh, we are now at the point where, and it feels sturdy, I'm going to let this sit for another 24 hours before I put strings on it, and I'm going to go ahead and start really cleaning this guitar up and I won't bore you with those details but uh, I'll bring you back when we go when we get ready to set the bridge in here and if I find anything that I think you guys should know I will turn the camera on and let you guys see that okay Noah is putting the Noah's putting the bridge back in This is a two-piece bridge on this guitar, and I hate these, but, you know, and I was talking to Noah about, you know, I want to replace it. Noah is more for the historical um, value and keeping it original, and I get it. The road, I mean, it came with a rosewood bridge, um, and Gibson didn't change that until the 70s. So, you know, this is what this guitar sounded like. Uh, we want to try to keep it sounding like an old Gibson. Uh, listen to the Gibson Epiphone. Um, uh, fun fact. This guitar was it made the same factory as my Gibson. Yeah. Classical. Yep. So Noah has a 1964 Gibson classical guitar. And uh, it was made in the same factory as this, Kalamazoo, Michigan. And... Um, Maybe even by the same person, nobody knows. But that would be weird. Uh, so this guitar and Noah's classical is only one year apart. Uh, but Noah's is, of course, a true Gibson. That would be awesome if this was a true Gibson. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Uh, but again, um, when it comes to Gibson and Epiphone, at least back in this day and age, they were the same guitars. Exactly the same guitars. The only difference between this and a Gibson is my neck is a little bit longer, about three quarters of an inch longer than a Gibson neck. Yeah. Now, he took that all the way down. This is an adjustable bridge. I hate this. That's why I want to get rid of it. Not get rid of the guitar, but this. I don't like adjustable bridges because you don't get the music flat on the guitar anymore. If you raise that bridge up, you have an airspace between this it's tight but i can loosen it a little bit if you want no just take it down until it touches and then you're good that's it yeah it is if it's snug that's good you don't have to i want to make sure i want to make sure that, that bridge is sitting on top of the it's now like almost it's about quarter of a turn take it down and tight. yep take it down and when it when it when it's when it stops screwing it's tight there you go yep Tight is tight. When it stops screwing, it is at the bottom. That's where I want it. Plus, remember, we want to try to gain as much room as we can get. We may have to take it back up. Hopefully, you know, I think the neck has enough of a rise in it. Because this could probably use a neck reset, but we're not going to reset the neck. <laughs> we're not doing that. I don't have the money, number one. I wish I did. If I did, I would have this thing set up like brand new again. But I don't. Um, and I'm happy with it. it. Even before we did the bridge with the bridge ripped out and sticking up in the air, which put string height on it, it sounded good. It played great. Oh, yeah, I had to run. I didn't show that on camera, but let me zoom into that a little bit. Um, I ran a drill bit down through these holes because they had some glue. Uh, they had some glue in there looks like a very well cared for old guitar yeah so if I can zoom in on the neck it looks like you somebody who took care of it yeah you, as you guys can see the neck looks really really nice now notice those diamond inlays just pop so you'll see when we get this done I'll have a nice straight on shot uh, and I'll let you guys see it but while we're here and I have this zoomed in yeah 
we'll show that tomorrow too. The cowboy cord. Um, I wanted to give you guys a good look at the uh, the bridge job Noah did. Outstanding, because he did all the cutting and scraping. I have no control over my right hand anymore. Um, yes, it's got some battle scars. You know, I don't care. Uh, you you will get that when you reset a neck. Yeah, I'm not a professional. This is only the listen to me reset a neck. You'll get that when you replace a bridge. I would. This is only what our second guitar yeah. ever putting a bridge back on. So I think we did pretty damn good. Yeah, we gotta do a little, but uh, this had this had absolutely no tear out. So there's a very, very thin layer of glue in there, um, which is what you want. Uh, now, of course, when we did this, we put, you guys saw, you glue on both pieces, 100% coverage. Uh, but what you don't want is just gobs of glue. And then when you put it on, it just, it, when you squeeze it down, it's just glue everywhere. It came out like a Yeah, it, it squeezed out. It bubbled out the whole way around, especially when we tighten down the clamps. Because this top's got a little bit of a bow in the top. Well, that's and just from, that's, from that's just years. from years, yeah. And when we put the clamps on, just the outside clamps, it hit this first and it just put nice, even pressure the whole way across. So it actually turned out pretty good for us. I didn't even need that third clamp. We used it, but I didn't need it. And no glue went into the screw holes. Yes, no glue went into the screw holes I that adjust this up and down. Okay, we have the bridge on it, uh, we strung it up, so far everything's holding. We did, we did let it sit overnight, uh, an extra 12, 14 hours. You don't have to guys, just so you know. Uh, when the glue is dry, it's dry, but we were just kind of freaked out, but the bridge is holding nicely. Um, the action on the guitar is actually very low. Uh, we might have to raise the bridge. Wow, is that low. Okay, hey guys, um, we are at the end of the video, and as you can see from the previous video, uh, I showed you some close-ups of it, and it has been, what, no, about, how long? Two days. It's been about two days now, and everything's holding up great, 
no separation, and the guitar sounds phenomenal. I would have never guessed that this guitar would... It's completely changed the sound of the guitar. You guys probably won't notice it because our microphones do not pick up the subtle nuances that a guitar puts out, but we can hear it. Well, we recorded it when the bridge was broken and it was a little bit muffled, but now you can really hear it now. Hopefully, yeah. I'll try. I will try to look for the old recordings, and I'll put some in here so we can do a side by side. But we're gonna go ahead and let Noah play it. Let you guys hear what it sounds like. And I'm just gonna let him play what he wants to play. I think I know what you're talking about. Have a little fun and then we're gonna close it out. Take this. I'll take 
Let me put on my pick here real quick. And while I'm at it, you just keep an eye on the video. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the pick that we purchased. Um, no, you want this one to be looking at you. Yeah, both of them are looking at me, but, you know, it just gives different angles. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and use this pick that we purchased um, for people that have handicaps. And it's nice. I wish the pick was thinner, okay? And I'm just going to play straight chords. I'm not going to try to do any picking or anything because it, it's. I'm still having to. Get, I'm still trying to get used to it. Man, I can't believe how this sounds. Okay, we're going to play a G, C, D, A minor 7, E, A minor 7, maybe some bar chords. I can't believe how low these strings are. So, there you guys have it. Um, if you have an issue with your bridge coming off, I recommend watching a lot of videos on YouTube and just reading some books. Do your own research because you can do it. Yes, you're going to need some specialty tools. We needed to get some clamps in a big way, right? Yeah. Uh, the clamps were the, the hardest things to find because you do need special clamps for this. The only thing I can tell you is take your time. We were lucky. The bridge came off for us very easily. The only thing that was holding it on were these two pins, actually, and a little a couple spots of glue. But if your bridge is being held on by, like, a lot more glue than ours is, get a real thin putty knife, heat that putty knife up, put it in there, and try to melt the glue out, and there you go. Try not um, to cut it, too, Try not to cut the wood, yes. Uh, make sure you sand smooth or scrape smooth both the bridge and the base of the guitar. And I would put the bridge back on the guitar trace around it with a razor and take off any finish that's going to impede the bridge from sitting flat on the wood and then be sparingly on the glue yes you can put a whole bunch of glue on it but you want to make sure you squeeze out almost all of it just so it has a nice smooth coating of glue and then wipe up your excess yeah just don't do what we did the first time oh my god we went way overboard with the glue the first time but we learned from our mistakes Actually, the last thing yeah, go ahead and get it. The last thing I want to show you is the string height on this. I didn't have to do anything. And we are now down on the 12th fret. Um, probably, I could maybe fit two dimes in there. Maybe. Between the 12th fret, top of the fret, and the, the E string. The low E. Maybe I could fit two dimes in there. This guitar's never been this low since I've used it. And it's just, it's, and the, the, the sound is just phenomenally loud coming from this guitar. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to close this video out by letting Noah show you the other guitar that we fixed. And of course, this one here is the Gibson, and this is a 1964, 1964, one year newer than my guitar. But this is not an Epiphone, this is a Gibson, classical, 1964 solid top solid mahogany back and sides it's just a lovely now the, we still have to lower the bridge on this and we have to get a bridge that's a little fits. wider to fit it but but the sound is phenomenal so we're going to close this out with him playing it uh if you like the video you know think about hitting that like button if you're new to the channel think about subscribing with that said we'll see you all on the next one